a Frisco Friday slash Payday Friday here on the Rose. Good morning to everybody out here getting off their graveyard shift. If you're at work, what is happening? If you're getting off of work, what is happening? Boat operators, firefighters, cops, highway patrol, everybody on YouTube and Twitch, powered by First NorCal Credit Union, all the callers today. Great calls, great singing, great bars from Duke. How about our boy San Leandro Mo with the bars? Oh Ain't God. no sunshine. I thought he was Bill Withers. Uh, shout out to everybody out there getting ready for a great weekend of sports. We got Warriors and Cavs tomorrow. We have Niners and Jaguars on Sunday in what I think is a must-win game. You win this game on Sunday, Niner fans, and I'll, trust me, you win this game. And this season flips, and all of a sudden we're talking about a second-half surge getting ready for the playoffs. But you got to win on Sunday, and is, is it going to be easy? It's a, Absolutely not. It's a BAM game by any means, means necessary. necessary. I know oh, you like that, Spadoni. But not then, damn, bam. Hey, by the way, good morning to the Sharks, too. They just won their second in a row. Hey, that's a winning streak. They got Connor McDavid and the yeah. Edmonton Oilers. Yeah. We may never lose again. May they play Vegas tonight. Three in a row for the Sharkies. Three in a row. <laughs> yeah, let's go, Sharks. Let's go, Sharks. Scar. 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 We got Rob Stats Guerrero on. He's ready to roll. We're punch drunk with hockey wins. We, we are. We are. We need a win. That's why. Fast some losses around here. Go to Andrew Podcast Network. Rob Stats Guerrero. Uh, you can find him all over the place on Twitter. Every time I look up, he's got some. He's getting into it with somebody here. Rob, let's be cool today, man. Niners are winning on Sunday, right, Rob? Come on. Tell us why the Niners are winning on Sunday. They damn well better. They're winning because they got to win. Uh, you're celebrating the Sharks two game win streak. Yeah, I would love a two-game win streak right now for the 49ers. <laughs> they haven't won in over a calendar month, all right? I do not like this. It, it, the trenches. And Mike, he, Shasky's pointing out to Brock Purdy and the head coach Kyle Shanahan, and on defense, he's pointing to Charverius Ward. I'm just looking at units. I'm looking at the front four on defense and the front five on offense. To me, they have to control the trenches, and Jacksonville comes in with a top four run defense. They're not giving up the run, and they're running the ball where the Niners are giving up a lot of yards on the ground in the last three games, 122 to be exact here. So what is your key to Sunday to getting this win, to getting the first win in over a calendar month? I completely agree with you. Remember a few years ago when Mike Singletary said, we go out, we hit people in the mouth. Well, when's the last time the 49ers did that? It's been since that Cowboys game. Since then, they've been the ones taking the punch. They got to get back to dominating a line to scrimmage. I completely agree with you. And look, they should be able to do it this week. There's no excuse not to. I know the Jacks are good against the run. They're not supposed to be on the 49ers level. So let's act like it. What has been going on with Christian McCaffrey here? I know the five man fronts that they've been going up against. It just feels like they haven't been able to establish the run game. And obviously he's got the core injury. But it just doesn't look as good. What? How do they free this guy up? Because we know running the ball is, is paramount for this offense. Well, yes, it is. But I actually think this week they might have better success getting him the ball as a receiver than a running back. The Jags allow seven receptions per game to running backs this season. I like that. Uh, in, in talking to some people in Jacksonville, the biggest weakness is covering running backs coming out of the backfield. Well, who does that better than Christian McCaffrey? So I almost think their best bet to get him the ball this week. Yeah, you can hand it off, but if you really want him to have an impact, I think you throw it to him. Steve Wilkes coming down from the booth to the sideline. That's been a big talking point. We've had Brian Baldinger on. You know Baldy at NFL. He says it doesn't matter. Just call the play and execute the play. I believe it doesn't matter at all. You see guys, Vic Fangio, Dan Quinn, they're in the booth and whatever. What did you make of this whole Steve Wilkes coming down from the press box to the sideline? I thought it was a giant waste of time. The problem with the 49ers defense is not the physical location of the play caller. Like, do we really think that the 49ers could not get messages from the sideline to the booth? Was the carrier pigeon shot down? Of course they could get messages there. I think this is an excuse. I really do. I think it's when they lost to Cleveland, it was, well, if Jake Moody just makes the kick, then, then we would have won. When they lost to Minnesota, it was, well, that blitz call. If we just didn't do that, we would have been fine. And when we lost to Cincinnati, now it's, well, if Steve Wilkes had been down on the field, we would have been good. Like, what is the excuse going to be next week if they lose this game and Steve Wilkes is up? Uh-oh. Breaking up apart. I think his phone broke up. Hold on, Rob. We're going to get you on. His audio cut out for a second here. Audio cut out. Hold on, Rob. Hang tight. Hang tight. Get Rob on there. We'll get him. Uh, he's on the road there. But he's right. No excuses. 
No excuses. You got Chase Young. You got Nick Bosa. We always say that. No excuses. And then no. stuff happens. And then we can make and all the excuses make in the world. Excuses. But they come from the locker room. <laughs> they come from the locker room. And then we feed off of that. So, look, I'm with you, Shasky. Bam. By any means necessary. By any means necessary. Win a football game. We'll get to the offense in just a second. But I'm looking at, again, I'm looking at tone setters. And to me, the highest paid defensive line have to set the tone this week. It all Again, I'm looking at the numbers here. They've given up 122 yards per game on the ground the last three games, which coincides with the three-game losing streak. They've given up 4.4 yards a carry. You're letting teams, you're allowing teams to be ahead of the sticks. You're allowing teams to set up themselves for third and twos and third and threes and third and ones. And with this personnel that you're playing against, they've had a... Doug Peterson feasts on third and twos and third and ones. They are a very good team when it comes to getting first downs and controlling the clock. And they've got a lot of guys in Travis Etienne, Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, and they just traded for Ezra uh, Cleveland there from the Minnesota Vikings, who's given up one sack in his last 366 pass blocking attempts. All right, we got Rob Stats Guerrero back. Go ahead, finish, Rob. You're on fire there, but our phone lines cut out there for a second. Yeah, I just think that I think we're being a little unfair to Steve Wilkes. If I told you that the 49ers had a three-game stretch where they gave up more than 24 points per game every year since 2019, would you be stunned? Because I think most people would be. We're acting like the defense has never played worse than this. Well, this is what happens to this defense every year. We have seen them have stretches like this. So I think Steve Wilkes is getting too much blame. I, I would agree with that. The only distinction is that... <laughs> You've never heard this many of the players like complain about it openly, you know, and so whether they're scapegoating him or not, like it, I find it random that a, a team with Bosa and Fred Warner and all the Traverius Ward, all these high paid guys, Hargrave, they're making such a big deal out of this because we could talk about it till we're blue in the face. But clearly, internally, there's something to this. But I don't want to talk about Wilkes on the sidelines. So stupid. I want to talk about the quarterback. These next nine games feel massive for him. And this one in particular, coming off the bye, given everything that's going on right now, he cannot turn the ball over in the fourth quarter in this game. He can't turn the ball over at all in this game. And that's a tall order because the Jags are tied for the league lead in turnovers force. This mm. is what they do. Mm. This is how their defense gets stopped. They're 30th against the pass, Jacksonville is. But they get turnovers, so it hasn't hurt them as much this year as you might think. Brock has to protect the ball, especially go look at some of his turnovers. That, that stupid interception in the red zone against Cincinnati, that's on first down. A lot of his turnovers are coming early in the down. That was a seven-point game. Down. One second, I'm going to stop you. Seven-point game, first down, he doesn't hand the ball off and then doesn't flip the ball to Kittle for whatever reason, rolls out. It's going to be a penalty no matter what because all your linemen are downfield, and then throws the ball instead of sliding on first and goal in a seven-point game after you've gotten two stops consecutively from your defense. So continue. That that play in particular, is, uh, there are no excuses other than Brock made a horrific mistake on that play. A thousand percent right. And then he threw an interception on the next play, which obviously was first down on the right. following possession. He has to know when the play is over. Yeah. Just live to play another down. And I get that there's going to be growing pains and all that stuff. But these are unforced errors. What do you make of the 49ers not being able to run the ball? Because Jacksonville is top five when it comes to giving up yards per game. They're giving up about 76 yards per game on the ground. They've been really good the last three weeks. The Niners haven't been good. You take away Brock Purdy's scrambles and his rushing yards, the Niners are averaging 3.6 yards per carry uh, the last three weeks, and that's what they do. Is it the five-man fronts that they're seeing from Cincinnati and Cleveland at times? What do you make of the Niners, or is it all uh, – contingent on Trent Williams not being in the lineup. Is that is that it? Is it that simple? I think it's both. I think the five-man fronts are part of it, but also, yeah, the Trent thing, let's face it, he's their best offensive lineman by far, and this offense, I always talk about it like a clock. If all the parts are doing their job, it is an unstoppable machine. But if even one part is off, the whole thing breaks down, and it can't function. And that's mm. what we've seen with the running game, whether it's been... Jalen Moore filling in for Trent Williams, whether it's been Aaron Banks, who I know has been banged up, but there's always been one piece on this offensive line that isn't quite humming in the last three weeks, and so their ground game has just fallen apart. Is it too simplistic to say they've been like they've, they've been out quarterbacked three weeks in a row? I mean, P.J. Walker, for as, as up and down <laughs> as it was, outplayed Brock in that game. 
Kirk Cousins out when it was all said and outplayed Brock in that yep. game. Joe Burrow clearly outplayed Brock in that game, and Brock was good for stretches. Is that too simplistic? I think what has happened with Brock is that his bad plays have been so much worse than his good plays. Like you said against Cincinnati, he made a ton of great plays. Right. The first touchdown drive they score is all Brock Purdy using mm-hmm. his legs, extending plays. He was really good. He had some throws to Kittle over the middle that are tight window, deep down the field, like elite level throws. But the problem is his worst plays, the interceptions, like we talked about, were so much more impactful in the game. So he is making good plays, but sometimes being a quarterback is all about the worst thing that you do. And the worst things that he has done recently have shifted the game against the 49ers. Ron, let me ask you this. We are discussing this earlier because Doug Peterson, I don't think, gets a lot of credit. He's a Super Bowl winning head coach. And to win a Super Bowl with Nick Foles and he developed Carson Wentz, he was playing at the height of his powers. He was balling. He was an MVP before he got hurt at the L.A. Memorial Coliseum against the L.A. Rams. Uh, Who would you trust more in terms of developing a young quarterback? Would you trust Doug Peterson more so than Kyle Shanahan? A thousand percent. Why is that? What in Kyle Kyle Shanahan's repertoire leads you to believe that he can develop a young quarterback? Mm. I, I don't know what it would be. Like you just said, Doug Peterson had Carson Wentz playing at an MVP level, and we've seen Carson Wentz go other places, even with other people on Doug Peterson's staff, and it has never been as close to how good it was when he was with Philadelphia and the Eagles. So to me, I completely agree. Doug Peterson doesn't get enough credit for that Super Bowl win. He beat the Patriots with Nick Foles, and Tom Brady threw for 500 yards in the game. Rob Stats Guerrero here on the morning roast on 9570 Games. So how does it end on Sunday? What did, what are you feeling right now? Because we're saying by any means necessary, win the game, start the second half surge, and become the team that we all thought you were when you were winning five in a row to start the season. How does Sunday play out? Is this just too much of a tall order on the road against Jacksonville? No, I think you're going to get two things that are going to be better than what we've seen lately. Number one, I think you're going to get a better effort from Christian McCaffrey. I think he was pretty banged up. I think he's going to be a little rejuvenated. And two, you're going to get the desperate 49ers. You're going to get the 49ers with a little sense of urgency. Yeah, they're talking like, oh, you know, we know we can do it. But I think they realize, like you talked about a few minutes ago, if you go five and four, the difference between five and four and six and three is massive if you lose this game you are in free fall you have wasted your incredible start to the season all that stuff you win the game you're six and three you've righted the ship on everything you want and the nfc is still potentially there for you so i think the 49ers recognize that i think you're going to get a rejuvenated mccaffrey you're going to get a rejuvenated drake greenlaw which will be huge and i think you're going to get a 49ers win all right there it is rob stats guerrero gold standard podcast network check him out he is really good he's tapped into the 49ers man he's talking niners all day long i know he'd be locked and loaded on sunday rob always appreciate the time man thanks for always joining us Thanks for having me. Thanks, buddy. Good stuff from Rob Stats Guerrero, man. He said a lot of good things there.